Dr. Paul Jose always uh, organized such a uh, uh, nice uh, intellectually inspiring um, curriculum. Uh, and I, this is my honor to introduce our guest speaker, uh, Ethan Knight. And he graduated, had his uh, PhD from UC Berkeley, and then now he's a full professor at UC Irvine. So let's not waste any time, and I will uh, give the time to you, uh, Professor Ian. And thanks for you know, waiting for hearing your uh, one. So let's first give a talk. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. So, first of all, I thank Sunday for the kind uh, introduction, and also I thank our uh, Jose for the invitation. Um, I'm very honored to be here, uh, to be honest, because uh, as you mentioned, I'm a professor at the uh, uh, the silver, more precisely, I'm not a professor at the silver. So this, uh, this is the first time I speak outside the uh, mass community. So this is kind of when I first uh, received the invitation from uh, Jose, I was kind of hesitant. Okay, so how should I present those things in the lyrics uh, of a theoretical and even part? Okay, so but anyway, so I think this is uh, an adventure for me. Uh, what I would do is I try to make the talk as um, as elementary as possible. That means I will just um, um, uh, briefly go over what is the physical background of the problem and what kind of problems we are interested in and what is the physical meaning of those things. In other words, like why we are interested. Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to involve any technical details um, beyond the simple calculus. Okay, so I'm going to go as slow as, um, as I can. So if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me. So okay, I'll just do until this is a kind of informal way. All right. So um, the thing I'm going to talk about is called the uh, G equation, and this is mainly based on joint works with my colleague uh, Jackson. Okay. So by the way, so G equation is uh, it's a very famous, uh, well-known model in chemistry when people try to understand like how flame are formed, and that's the Wikipedia page on the G equation. Now, very often when we give talks about T equation, and Jack was asked a couple of times, he would ask me, why is it called a T equation? But up to this point, although like this equation was well known in the but it's not so clear why it's called a T equation. Okay, so I think this is probably due to a different culture in the uh, Russian community, because in, in, in mathematics, if we have a famous equation, we should name it after people. For example, Laplace equation, right? So that's named after Laplace. Now is thought, that's named after, after non -stop. What about gamma function? Uh, uh, what about the gamma function? <laughs> I'm not talking about that. That's okay. All right. All right. All right. So, okay. So, first, let, let me tell you the, uh, the, uh, how this equation is about. Okay. So, uh, we think of um, this is the flame prong. So, this initially, let's say I put gamma zero. So, this is the uh, flame, where, where it is initially. Then we know the flame will propagate, right? Uh, you can think of um, the T equation uh, in applications is usually used to look at combustion when you call engine, but you probably don't like that much. If you think of uh, wildfire, forest fire, which we kind of common in, uh, in California. So let's say this is where the fire uh, uh, starts. And of course, people want to know, like after the after five minutes, after one, uh, one hour, where is the, uh, the flame from? Okay, so let's say we can have, all right, so after the time T, the frame from propagates to uh, this place, right? right? So this is a uh, x gamma t. The question is, you have to give a model uh, to describe it. But as long as you have a model, we can do uh, communications, right? And then you can predict this. Okay, so uh, there, are, there are many models uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the Boston community to do that. Now, what I'm going to talk about G question is rather a simple one. It's a simple in the way we put to ask ourselves, it's okay, all right. Um, that's how this. Suppose this is, I choose a point X, right? We ask ourselves, why the flame will propagate at the first place, right? And we know, okay, we know there are two things, uh, kind of common sense. One is the chemical reaction, right? Chemical reaction. Uh, the chemical reaction, uh, you can think of, like, say, in this room, right? If I, if I ignite my paper, the flame will propagate, right? This has nothing to do with uh, wind or whatever, it's just chemical reaction. So this one we can do by uh, lambda flame speed. So it's okay, I just use this quantity to describe whatever comes from the chemical reaction. And the other one we know, if you think of uh, forest fire, the 
that's wind, right? Wind will push the blink location. So that's with okay, so that's wind, which is uh, which I write as the dx. Dx just means the wind velocity at a point x mathematically, which just means a function that defined on Rn and uh, the uh, the uh, the output is or the exact value. Uh, sometimes uh, physicists uh, um, piece of mathematics. Why do you need, why do you guys care about n dimension? Because the physical space is only three dimension. Like why do n dimension? The point is that just like the mathematician like to do, you just extend things to the general situation. All right, so for convenience, it's okay. You just follow I But if you don't like this, it's okay. I just R three to R three, or even you put out on two uh, on planes that not R two part. All right, uh, this is the wing. Now we have two things. Um, if we need a car engine, uh, what happens is uh, people want uh, the combustion to go as fast as they can to make it more efficient. So what they do, you have the uh, mixture of air, gas, uh, you have the mixture of air and gas, right? You stir it to make it move and push the uh, the blade location. All right, and then you say, all right, now I look at this point. I want to look at uh, the uh, the velocity along the normal direction, right? Okay, so you have a plane left like here. Let's look at on two D. So then, of course, you have a normal direction, right? Just perpendicular to it. Uh, uh, in calculus, this means you have a curve, you have a tangent line, and you just find the direction perpendicular to the line, right? That's normal direction. All right, so the normal velocity is just given. We say, okay, yeah, all right. So the normal velocity is just given by what? Uh, given by the laminar flame speed uh, captures uh, chemical reaction and plus the weight, right? So the weight is pushing. So it's the, it's the projection of the wind on the normal direction, right? Okay. And then you say, all right, so this is the motion law. What can you do? Uh, one way, which is uh, naturally, oh, let's just use the discretized state. Right? You understand? Oh, yeah, I just, I don't like it. You know, let's discretize. Okay, let's discretize state. That means the next moment, okay, if I uh, go to the next moment, where it will be, uh, x will just move to the x plus, let's say f the time is the delta t, is the delta t and the plus uh, this one. So it's SL plus, uh, maybe I just, I just write this guy. So it's the uh, normal velocity and the move along the normal direction, right? So that's the next thing. Then probably think, okay, now let's just go with this way, right? If you are okay with calculus, we can just write this, it's okay, we look at the trajectory you start from, I'm just going to the continuous version. All right, so if you look at the trajectory of it, and you look at the uh, uh, motion trajectory, and then it just says the velocity. If you look at, take the derivative, this is the integral derivative, right? What's the velocity? The velocity just equals to the normal direction of this, and you multiply. So this tells you the magnitude, the speed. And the direction is just along the uh, normal vector. That's it, right? You do this now, then you say, Oh, yeah, okay, good. Then you just go is uh, okay, you just uh, because everything is discretized, right? And then you implement the computer, you do step by step, step, and then you realize something is going to happen that's unpleasant. You say, Okay, so what what that means is great, right? The point is, look, if I have uh, if let's say the great font is something like that, just hypothetically, right? Hypothetically, this is at some moment. Capture it, okay, play from. And then if you go, it's okay, let's let's uh, let's evolve the play from uh, according to that um, a relation. Then what you have is then what you have is you say, okay, so this one will go to here and this one will go to there. And what happens? It will leave, right? And okay, so we say, oh, okay, so meet. So what? What's the problem? The problem is as long as they meet. The curve is going to be no longer smooth, right? It's going to the topology will be destroyed. So you will get a very complex situation. That means whatever you do here, according to calculus, it's no longer working. So then you have to ask yourself, okay, then how should you um, fix the problem? Because it looks like this is very natural, but it looks like it can only go for a while, but it cannot go forever. If you want to go forever, you build up um, a sustainable model. How should you do? Now, people have different ways to uh, to fix the problem, but what I want to introduce is something called level set method. Oops, not lab. 
That was like my third. Now, that was that a method. Um, if you look at the computational mathematics, people have introduced uh, many different uh, uh, ways to compute things. Um, um, both that there are a lot of things, an interesting thing, uh, significant. Uh, and if you look at the development, uh, if, we, if, we, if people want to name, say, can you name several things you think is really important and everyone should know it, one of them is that was that a method. Uh, it's not, uh, um, I, 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 I don't really know uh, exactly who first uh, brought, uh, uh, brought out the idea, but in, in, uh, in, math, in uh, mathematical, in math uh, community, uh, they, they, the method was in, mainly introduced by uh, Osher, by Stan Osher and Stephen. Um, okay, all right, so well, what's the idea? The idea is like we say, uh, well, the idea is like, uh, you say, okay, uh, I'm going to introduce a function about that. Instead of use this Laplacian approach, right? So this, when I say Laplacian approach, means you basically just follow the movement of the particle. Right? Right? So that's you do. Now, how about we use another way? We say we introduce a reference function gxt, right? So gxt, and uh, and then we assume, just assume, if you look at this is the gamma t, right? So this is free from at uh, gamma t, so at a t time, so break from. And we just in impose this function so that this is the burned area. This is already burned. The burned area is just the uh, place where this guy is less than zero. Now I freeze the time. We take a snapshot, right? So, okay. Each time I impose a function such that I just, you, you do whatever you like. So, okay, I do this so that, and the outside unburned place, this is unburned, right? So, this is unburned. Umbrella place is gxt, which is uh, bigger than zero, and the free from, which is the place we are interested. In. So that's the where the, uh, the physics, everything happens, all the physics so far happens on, on the free from. So the free from, when you look at it, yeah, just move the zero level set. Okay. So then this gamma t is just the place where at t equals zero. All right. So we introduce the function. Then, of course, you'll say, all right, uh, how, how you introduce the function? Uh, if, of course, if I know the function, then I know the, uh, the level set, right? Because it just gives my level set. So the point is, how, so can you introduce, can we find an equation, right? So do we have an equation that's done by, by the, uh, the, uh, the, the GX? And it turns out is yes. What do we do? Let us just do this. It's very useful. I'm going to derive it. Uh, the derivation just uses the model value of okay. Two, nothing else. Just two. Okay. Uh, it's much simpler than the derivation of our star equation. In our star equation, you should know, you still need to look at the Newton type of motion and those kind of things. But, like, but, but this one that's the only multivariate calculus. Okay, let's do it. All right, so what do we have? Uh, we, we just look at uh, uh, the, uh, the, the projection. We just look at the application of free form, right? So this is okay, we look at it. Uh, XS just means, uh, let's take a start from X. X S just means the uh, the, the uh, location of X at time S update, and I put S just for convenience. I, I, I'm okay. I'm going to look at the time S. Then what you have? Number one, because we assume the free from is always so. This is this is for any time t. So I assume the free from is always from uh, you know that was said right. All right, so this we just kind of work with just nothing uh, mathematically. Just we, that's how we set it. We say, okay, we have x as s equals zero. That's we set it. The frame from is always a zero level set, right? And then uh, we can take a less thing to do with Let's take a do with this because this is in calculus, we know if it's a constant zero, that means if you take a derivative of zero, right? And from here, you get, okay, let's take the derivative. We take the derivative of this one, the s, there's a g, x, s, s equals zero. Okay, how we do it? We, so we take the partial derivative with respect to the t variable, right? t, and x, s, s, right? And then we take the partial derivative with respect to the, 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 the x variable, right? All right, so that by two movements. 
just jingle. You take a touch of the video. It's okay, it's a green object. You take a touch. When I say green, it means the green object is an X variable. Okay, so this X is S. Now the gradient X, and then again X S S, and then times the uh, dot equals Z, right? That's just how we do it. Okay, now. All right. Okay. And then it's still, it's okay, but, the, but the still, you still don't have the equation yet, right? You have the G, but you have the derivative of RxC. But, but don't forget, but, uh, don't, uh, don't forget, we have the, this one here, right? We have this one here. Uh, let's write out. Let me rewrite here. So I have the X dot S. We have the motion rule. Okay, so that's the only place we need the figures. So that's the only place. Okay, so then we have this is, uh, let me just plug everything there. So this will be SL plus this DX dot N, the normal vector, and then dot the normal vector here. That's it, right? All right, yeah, that's it. And then you plug back into here. But then when you look at it, you say, okay, um, if I plug into here, there's still something which is not so clear, which is the normal vector, right? You say, okay, I already have G, good. I already have V, nice, right here. But you still have this normal vector. Why do you use the normal vector? But then from calculus, you know. Okay, so again, I'm going to use some multi-value calculus. Suppose I have a surface. The surface is this way by the by equation. So it's Fx equals zero. Now, right, so this is a thing like that. Now, what is the outward one? Let's say this is f less than zero, this is f bigger than zero. Now, what is the outward normal vector? It's gradient normalizing. Okay, so this normal vector will just be the gradient of f normalizing. Let's see. Okay, so but here we already know, oh yeah, the frame front is just the zero level set of g. So the normal vector from here will get, so this is what we'll get. We'll just get what? So just A gets the gradient of G divided by the magnitude of G. So this is just the norm because it's a vector. We normalize it to make a unit. Ah, now you plug into here and then you put it back. Right. Okay, so let me write one step. So this one B, if I write here, so this will be SL times the gradient of G over the magnitude of gradient G. And here you do it again, so this will just be past the dx uh, dot uh, the gradient. Uh, yeah, all right. Okay, so that's uh, g and uh, like that. So yeah, so that's uh, that's what we have. Okay, all right. Uh, well, that's what we have uh, times uh, this normal vector. Now I just plug this back in here. I take the uh, dot product with this, you immediately get you. Take the dot product with that, uh, you take the dot product with that. The only thing you use is the gradient of G, okay, just use the factor. The gradient of G, dot the gradient of G is the square of its magnitude, right? So this is we know from the algebra. And then if you plot everything here, immediate gap equation satisfied by G. So this is the GT plus, dx dot the gradient of g and plus sl times the gradient of g equals and that's the uh, the equation that is by the g and that's the pd and this is called g uh this equation was first um okay so this form so this uh form was due to our formal variance um so Paul Williams is a top expert in combustion, and he, in uh, the, uh, the article, I think is uh, 1985, this was formally introduced. Uh, but if you look at the history, if you look at the Wikipedia page, the Wikipedia page is that, uh, uh, if you look at some early forms, not exactly this one, but if you have the early forms of the G equation, this mark, this, it, it, it was, uh, the equation was proposed by Mark Stein. In 1981, in, in, in 1982. So it was a long history, right? Almost, okay. Now, so, so we got the equation. All right, so the point is in theory, okay, so you say, okay, got an equation. 
And uh, suppose I know the uh, uh, initial, uh, initial uh, if I measure the initial initial flame form, right? So I have, I say, okay, I have the initial uh, flame form that I know, which says G0x, and then I just go ahead and solve the PD, right? You are able to, uh, you are able to predict the, the location of the flame form. But then uh, when people look at, uh, um, look at the PDs, right? Uh, the first question is, do we have a solution? Right? Okay, when you say solution, it really means okay. So when um, uh, okay, I, I think in applied science, people when people usually say, "Do you have a solution?" I think what they meant is, "Do you have a formula?" The formula means okay, you can write a solution in terms of some algebraic expression, and there are several parameters. Now, if I have, if I have a calculator, I just plug into the parameters, and it should give me an answer. Right? So that's like the uh, the quadratic formula. Of, uh, of, uh, of 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 uh, second uh, of um, uh, quadratic functions. Now, here the point is um, one thing I want to stress is first of all, this is a nonlinear PD. Okay, so when you look at it, this is nonlinear PD. It's a, uh, uh, what do you mean nonlinear? Nonlinear means this. Okay, so if you have suppose you say I have two solutions, right? So G is a solution. So G tilde is also a solution. Now I look at the linear combination of these two. I just add this together. So G plus the G two. And then you will find you say, okay, I, I, I uh, look at these two. So this is the G and the G two. If a G is a solution of that, G two is a solution of that, the question is whether G plus G two is also a solution of it. What do you think? Is it still a solution? When we think of linear algebra, right? If I have, let's say, okay, if AX is equal to zero and AY, and Y is also a zero, then XY is also a solution, right? Because it's linear. You can add them together. So it's AX times Y equals zero. So that's linear. Now, for PDE, we also have similar notions, whether linear or non linear. You look at this one, this is linear because G1. G tilde, so if you put, if you look at the G uh, plus G tilde, right? So you take the uh, partial view of T, you know, it's a linear. So this is GT plus G tilde T, okay. And this part is also linear, gradient. Now, there's one thing that's not linear, is this term. That's because, right, we know two, if you have two vectors, if I have two vectors, U and V, the magnitude of U plus V is not equivalent to the magnitude u of vector v, right? This is not true. In general, is less than This we call the triangle inequality, right? Okay, so this is nonlinear. The problem with non so so first of all, we 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 know this. Okay, so this guy is nonlinear. Okay, so this is nonlinear. So the first thing um, I want to uh, stress uh, for nonlinear PDEs. Okay, so I'm going to say so expert in this. So for nonlinear PDs, first thing we should have in mind is usually we do not have a formula. That's usually we do not have formula, but everything has uh, as exception. Uh, in my uh, in my impression, the most important exception of important no, not the most one. Let's say one of the most. I could be say uh, one of the most important nonlinear P that has an explicit solution is uh, fractional Morton law. That's in finance, right? One of the most important models in finance. And the developers, they got their fifth, uh, not fifth, but Nobel no, no, Prize for that. So that's a useful model, how should you price the options. For that one, when you derive, if you, if you go to those uh, stock options, uh, you derive the uh, equation, it's a PD. So when I say PD means, just means partial okay, equation, no partial. That equation is nonlinear. So usually when you look at nonlinear, you just, you just get away of it. I mean, you don't have a formula, but for that one, miraculously, if you by change of variables, you get explicit. So that's why it became popular in the economics because you have a formula. But unfortunately, in uh, in engineering, in in, in in manual applications, first of all, very often you encounter nonlinear equations. Uh, secondly, they do not have a formula. Okay, so then you say, okay, so if you don't have a formula, then what should you do? All right, so, okay, uh, let me say um, uh, that the, the contribution of mathematician, uh, mathematician here is 
it derives the equation, right? Mathematician can tell you, uh, we can guarantee it. this equation has a solution. By mathematical theory, can prove it, it has a solution. But then you may wonder, you don't have a formula, how do you prove it has a solution? Okay, we have a ways to prove it has a solution. But the, the, the point is sometimes um, people tease about uh, 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 theoretical mathematicians. You guys always tell people, only tell people the existence. You never tell people what they are. You tell them, okay, I'll show you their ace one, but we don't know what they are. All right, okay. Uh, that's, uh, that's not always fair, but, but anyway. So, 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 so the point is uh, we can do uh, numerical ways to, uh, to do it. Okay. All right, so I think that here we have a very strong uh, numerical atmosphere and the expert to, to, to calculate. So I, let me just uh, please bear with me and just say a little bit on that. Now, uh, numerical way you do, right? So it's okay, let's uh, numerically uh, solve it. Let's look at the simplest case. Simplest case is we just take the, uh, the um, we just take the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, this one to be constant. That's the simplest one, okay? Let's, uh, let's take this one to be one. So there are my equations to be constant, uh, gt plus the x bar dg and plus the magnitude dg equals zero. We have initial here, gx. Okay, all right. Now, for this one, when you look at this, okay, it's a PD, it's fourth order. But the fourth order means that it only involves uh, the, 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 the fourth derivative. And this one we call the Hamilton Jacobi equation. Jacobi equations. Yeah, uh, it's called Hamilton Jacobi equation because the first one to derive is, is, uh, is I think my Hamilton is uh, from mechanics, uh, from uh, uh, particle mechanics. So that's the name after. So that's why I said, in mathematics, it is very important that I often name after Hamilton Jacobi equation. Okay. All right, so then how, how do you numerically solve it, right? So, like, how do you numerically solve it? Um, uh, there are different ways to do. Let me just, I'm, I'm, again, I'm not going to get into details, but let me just uh, mention one thing. If you have an OD, uh, usually it's nice to do, right? So, suppose I just want to say, hey, I don't want to solve this OD, so let me say x dot t. x dot t equals say it's f, right? x t. You can make two in our medium usually, right? So, this is OD. Now, how do you do it? You just do tele expansion. It's okay, we know that x. Uh, there are many, many methods, but uh, uh, most of them just start from the, the most basic one. So it's okay if you do kind of expansion, you know, this is approximately like the xt, right? Uh, the, the first order correction, x point t times the function, right? And then you say, all right, so uh, we can just do a forward method, right? So this is, this is uh, simple to do, it's okay. When I go from the, uh, this is the next moment, xm plus one, so here m means the number stepping from time. And this is a previous moment. Yeah, I say, okay, just go with xn plus one equals the xn, right? And plus this guy, we already know this is just l, right? Okay, so it's l, you got it at xn, the previous step, and you times the time step, right? So this is uh, this is a basic way we solve for all the matter. When you look at this, oh, yeah, just, um, just hybridization, right? Just hybridization. And um, for all the, the, the thing is, for all these, it's rather simple because you only need to. Uh, it's because the pi. But for P D is it involves a partial derivative with respect to T and also involves a partial derivative with X. For time T, you say you can compute this, you can see this as like an OD, okay, I can it like this. But for the for, for, for the PD part, for the partial derivative part, again, you say, okay, yeah, let's just do a discretization, uh, right? Uh, numerical method, let's do discretization. Uh, those are the basic ones. Okay, so you have the partial derivative with respect to x, right? Partial derivative with respect to x, and then uh, you have um, uh, you have um, uh, okay. So let's say x t, right? Uh, uh, let, let's say uh, okay. Let's just look at one dimension so that I don't have to write out all those variables x one, x two, x three. Let's say one variable x, and then you see, oh wow, well, yeah, I can do this is just a fourth of t x plus delta x t over uh, minus the g, right? So xt over the other x. Okay, so you just do the expiration uh, on the x fraction. But then here, there's a subtle point. The subtle point is 
This one is you go from the right, right? And so why don't you go from the left? Minus the t, x minus delta x and t divided by delta x. We do this equation. And of course, you would think, uh, what's the difference, right? They should be the same. However, right, we deal with the first order equation. It has a very subtle form. The two things might be different. So why they should be different? Maybe if I calculate, um, if I calculate a function, right? Uh, you take the derivative. If you take the derivative from the left hand side, or you take the limit from the right hand side, what's the difference? They should be the same. The problem is that is true if your function is differentiable, right? But if your function is not differentiable, for example, if you have a function like this, like say this is just y x equals the um, um, maybe I just take the absolute value of x, right? So if you have a function like this. Like that, this is uh, y x equal the absolute value of x, and then when you try to take the derivative, you find hey, if I take this is not differentiable. If you take the derivative from the right, you get one. If you take the derivative from the left, you get negative one, right? So they are not the same. Then here yeah, you get into a subtle point. Which one should you use? This is the you say, why the reason why we have this issue is mathematically. The solution to this one might not be seen. It will have corners come up. But then some of you, um, I, I remember when I when I gave this talk to uh, to two graduate students, and then there's one of my colleagues was in the audience, and then he asked, it's a very, very fair question. Yeah. He said, hold on. But but you mentioned at the beginning, you derive the equation by assuming everything is smooth. But then now you tell people the solution might not be smooth. So what's the point? Right, the point is, it's a model, it's not a reality, right? It's just an you know, approximation, just assume everything. Uh, my advisor, one thing my advisor told me is, what you should do is, at the beginning, don't worry about how bad this is, just assume everything nice, and go ahead and do it, to, do, to, to, to see what, whatever you can get, and then go back to worry you should worry. Okay, so then, uh, this is, so the point is, it's just a model. And the advantage of this is, it's a PD, you can solve to all time. So unlike the previous I mentioned that the, uh, the upper method, it will stop at some point, but this one can do it. So just do it. Regardless of what, don't, don't worry, just do it. And then you find some answer. And then use answer to get to, uh, to with the uh, experiment, right? And then you do some uh, adjustment. Okay, all right. So then my point is, this is an issue. And it, it, it should be uh, very subtle when you, in the case of where, which one should you put, you should put the left or should put the right. This is something very careful. Uh, one, one way to fix that, one way to fix that is if some people say, you know, um, I, um, I, 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 I like to deal with uh, those kind of things. I have to worry about where I just want to solve it uh, uh, in a systematic way. Then what you can do is you just add, because as I mentioned, uh, the reason it is not going to well is I'm thinking, okay, so let's just smoothize it. So what you do is you put a fraction term in, that's an epsilon, times the Laplace with the x plus it. So you just uh, perfectly. And when you look at this, some of you realize if I, without this, right, what you get is just Healy equation. Healy equation. And Healy equation is nice. Nice in the way. Okay, so he first got Healy equation of form. If I give you suppose to throw the equation in the most space, uh, if I give you an initial data, you can write out the formula. And the formula tells you, regardless of how bad your initial data is, your, your initial data can be crazy. Like a one stand, uh, 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 where's the function? No value question. But as long as you apply the equation, instantly it has. Right. Okay. So then uh, the point is, after you apply this, you'll get uh, something smooth. Now, what you do is, okay, if I something smooth and we don't worry about uh, those kind of things, we just go ahead to solve it, right? So you just go ahead to solve it. And then it gets back as an epsilon. Uh, then after you solve this one, say, what's next? You just let epsilon, we just choose epsilon to be small. And we, we, we expect this one will approximate to this. All right, so then uh, you probably, I don't know, maybe you have heard the word, it's called viscosity uh, solution. Okay. 
solution. So that's what it meant. The solution to this one for the viscosity solution, because initially people can do is they add a lot faster and they send this one to zero to the approximate distance slicing. It's called a viscosity uh, because this kind of approach was first introduced through the mechanics. Uh, they add a viscosity to uh, to make the uh, thing uh, smooth. So this is kind of like oil equation and an oil equation with and without viscosity. All right, so that's why people call it a, 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 a viscosity uh, a solution. Okay, now, but of course, um, when when I uh, when I was a graduate student, when I think of the value computations, at that other time I I I, I have a wrong. Uh, I thought it's okay. Your variable computations, when you do is you, you are discrepancy and then you do it. I it should work. And later on, when I understand more, I realize it's, it's not that, that, that as, as simple as that. Even you have discrepancy, you put things into here. How, how you know that when you the, the step size, those things go zero, it will convert. You have to be very careful about how you discrepancy your space and how you discrepancy your time. So that has a lot of, uh, a lot of complicated issues. All right, so the point is that that's nothing. Um, okay, so um, finally, let me tell you something. Uh, yeah, so I let me, let me see. Yeah, let, let, let me tell you something that uh, we as mathematicians, what kind of question we can, what other question can we answer to, uh, to, to understand the implication. All right, uh, let's look at the following uh, concept. So there is um, there is some um, fundamental quantity in combustion that's called turbulent density. Turbulent okay. density. Uh, what what it is? Uh, let me draw. So first of all, I I don't think that's a uniform definition. Although the word turbulent density uh, appears uh, very often. Uh, in combustion literature, but I am not clear to me what is the rigorous uh, definition of the uh, turbulent speed. But heuristically, we, we can think of this. I uh, suppose, let's say, uh, this is the initial free form, right? You can think of you have um, you, you have a combustion chamber right here. Uh, this is a, it, uh, uh, this is the uh, initial free form. Let it, 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 it just be y-axis. Maybe I wait up in general. It's the uh, let's say this y-axis for convenience. This means x1 equals zero. All right. Now uh, the flame is moving this way, right? Because of the wind or those ambient blue, uh, you expect the, the flame will not stay as plane, right? Although it starts as plane, it'll be wrinkled, right? Okay. So after a while, it will be like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, but what do people care uh, care about is um, uh, those are fluctuations, right? Probably don't that uh, matter much. If you want to look at the average, it's okay. Now let's still look at this is the free form at some point. And it's okay. Uh, let's look at let's look at um, the mean condition of the free form. Uh, when you look at it, okay, still, well, let's say just x equals some um, L, right? X minus some L. Okay. All right. And then when when you observe the mean, okay, so each time the free form like that. I just look at the mean position, and you observe the mean position will after the uh, the flame is, is stabilized, you will realize the uh, the mean flame form will propagate with uh, constant speed. So that's what we say is ST means the curvature phase. All right, and then important question is first of all, well, I'm not sure uh, this as a some theoretical model part is uh, this is. Um, uh, the questions that are, are proposed in um, in combustion literature. So first one, do you, can, can you theoretically confirm confirm the existence of the turbulent speed? Theoretically confirm that. And number two, uh, can you study how this turbulent speed? So this one depends on. Depends on the physical parameter. For example, here the flow, right? You have the flow of the x, uh, the stress. 
uh, how it depends on the strength of flow. For example, you think of the flame um, uh, location, right? If I blow harder, how this is going to impact the, the, the composition of flame? And say, say some, some other physical uh, problem. Okay. okay, now for the first part, what do you mean theoretically uh, proof? Um, theoretically proof then is you can know that each time you like a chamber and oh, I, I observe that, I observe that. That's not the kind of proof. Their proof really involves uh, you have to have a model, mathematical model, right? Okay, so if we use the, uh, the G equation model, what does this mean? This just means, all right, you start with uh, equation, so it's a GXT, right? And you solve the, uh, the P, the P equation. Uh, let me remind you the P is so G P plus the X dot the G and plus the magnitude G equals zero. So here we focus on the most basic one, two for convenience. Right? You start from here, and uh, your, your, uh, your initial flame front is just given by the X one, right? Now you expect um, after a while it will stabilize, have this kind of profile. So that means mathematically, I'm just writing out mathematically. So mathematically it just means eventually your GXT is going to look like this, right? Look like um, uh, still it, it's it, 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 it's uh, the mean position is still linear. So that's the x1, right? The x1. And then and you plus uh, the uh, the fluctuations, those fluctuations, maybe I just use uh, ux who represents the fluctuation, right? And then uh, we plus what then minus the other probability speed. Minus the ST. Right? So this is the profile. So you see, this one just uh, captures the profile of that, right? Uh, the mean position plus the fluctuation and minus the height. Right? So then, mathematically, we can ask does, does this kind of profile exist or not? Like this kind of static solution is not. All right? So you just plot this back into the PD, right? So, okay, we just plot this back into the PD. To do it. Okay. Right. Okay, so uh, if you plot this back, this you say, okay, I plot this back form. So this kind of form solution, right? I plot this back into the equation. Oh, what do I get? I just get the first one is ST, and the next one is VX uh, dot. Uh, the gradient of this, I take the gradient of, all right, so this is just E1. E1 means the uh, the horizontal variable, right? Okay. I can even take it to the variable and the plus, you take the gradient of U, right? So gradient of UX and plus uh, the magnitude of this plus gradient of UX. This one equals zero. Right? That's a standard solution. Okay, all right. And then uh, if you move this one to the right hand side, what do you get? So you have E1 plus the gradient of UX plus the VX dot E1 plus the gradient of UX equals ST. Okay, so what's the mathematical question? The mathematical question is does there exist? So here I I I, I formulate it mathematically. So this one I, I put at a star. I formulate this one mathematically. Now, does there exist a number as a team such that this star has a solution, which is the X. Yeah, we guess the periodic, because we, if we take the flow to the periodic, that's the mathematical function. Uh, so this one on the GPC model, if the answer is yes, then we say uh, we theoretically confirm that. How much do people will buy it? That's a different story. Because people value different models. Because when we talk to people, people say some people like the G weight, the G model, some people probably don't like it, favor this or favor that. Okay, but but in any case, uh, at least if we agree, we say okay, this is a reasonable way to do it, then to some to some extent, 
uh, this uh, concurrency existed, right? On the cheap machine model. But also, um, so here we assume it's pure Arabic and she has a solution. There. And this is the answer is yes. So this is um, the, the one of the things that Jack and I did uh, that back to like 2010. That's how we started the, the, the G equation, uh, G equation of William. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. So that's the, the, okay. So we have the basis. Now, again, people want to tell what the ask is. All right. Uh, can you tell me? What this is? Okay, I cannot tell you what it is. Uh, well, we prove existence. Not a problem. All right, I, I know some of the hate that, right? Uh, I, okay, but, new, but numerically, you can do it. Because numerically, suppose this is correct. Right? Numerically, if this one is correct, then it, um, it uh, guarantees that the way you need to do it, you just solve the, uh, the, uh, the, the T version. TXT, you just solve this TXT, which equals. Uh, this is uh, this is x one. You solve this, and you take the uh, uh, take the derivative of t. Let me take that. Uh, okay, you might have to solve this, and you take the average of this, and this will be x. That's the mathematical solving. Uh, but but of course, like uh, in some situations, uh, we can do it. We can explain solving. Let's do it. Um, let's look at single case. We can explain this solving. Uh, we just use uh, simple calculus. All right, you think of the case, we have a slot burner. Uh, this is also an example um, that was listed on Wikipedia page because you want to see a computable example of G equation. This is a slot burner. All right, the, the point with slot burner is uh, the flow is very simple. You have the Vx, right? Uh, we just take the, the Vx uh, to be 1B. That means the flow, we, you, you, you push the flow, they're all on the same direction. Uh, we can write this as uh, because it's uh, along the uh, okay, say this is zero. Uh, this uh, uh, okay, um, y is for example one third to u, uh, uh, little b, right? So b y uh, zero. Okay, so we just do it like that. Okay, so then and the flame, right? So you play you start from here, right? And then okay, by that it will be it will be stabilized and this. And then solve it. Plug this back into here. Believe me, uh, because it's only one B, we, we basically ignore the X direction. All right, so it actually just reduce to, to, uh, to, to, the, to, to the, uh, the, uh, this OB. And it basically becomes OB if you have only one variable. It's what? It's the square root of one plus U prime Y squared and plus BY equals yes. We just do that. This is no. So this is no. Now, okay, so now I'm okay. All right, we can do it. I can solve this ST. When you first look at this, you say, okay, how do you solve that? Well, uh, for convenience, let's let just assume, uh, uh, yeah, okay, you say, okay, you say, okay, how you do it, right? Uh, it's not so clear because, um, so first of all, you say, okay, so first you say, you have the ST, you have the U here, you, say you have, you have, uh, you will say, hey, you have only one equation, but you have two unknowns. The U is not, uh, unknown, your ST is also unknown, right? But you only have one equation. How should you do it? Well, the point is, because this is 1D, so we can solve it nicely. I just say, okay, let's take the square on both sides, right? Say, so, okay, one plus U prime Y squared, right? Uh, this one will be, the st minus the by squared. Okay, all right. And then next you have u prime y squared equals um, one minus st minus uh, by squared and minus one. Let's assume. Uh, let's take the square root. Okay, let's take the square root. Now, of course, some of you are careful. How, how can you take a square liquid particle negative? But again, as I said, don't worry. Let's worry about things later. Okay, we take the square root of that. Okay. And then you see, okay, so then, then what? And the point is, because we know, we assume this guy is pure. We take the integration of both sides. 
i from zero one u prime y dy equals from zero to one the square root of st minus dy squared minus one dy right and dy okay oh wow so if you take the uh, integration of this, you get this is u y minus u zero, but because u one, sorry, u one minus u zero, but because we assume the periodic, it's gone, right? Okay, all right, and then we say, all right, okay, so that's uh, that's um, uh, uh, um, oh, so minus one, right? So that's basically uh, uh, what you have. You just should uh, uh, here. You probably should take the. Uh, the uh, the um, let's see. Okay, so here you should uh, take the um, uh, right. So so to, uh, so so minus. You have to plus or somewhere plus somewhere minus because you will have plus or minus plus. But anyway, so it it, it, it will come up with if let's say you take the uh, uh, plus or minus plus and. Yeah, okay, so then we have this one, right? So here we have, uh, uh, yeah, we take it one minus, right? Okay, so some, uh, this is one minus EST, EST and uh, minus uh, constant, right? Okay, so ST uh, minus uh, the VY, here is, we take this is square, and this is the minus one, right? Okay, uh, uh, that's what we have. All right, so then uh, we take the square root of that. Uh, okay, right. So we take the square root of that. Of course, as, as in general, you have plus or minus, right? You have plus or minus. You have the square root of st minus dy and squared minus one. And then you have the integration from zero to one and dy of the integration from zero to one and dy this will equal zero. So from here, we are able to get the equation of st, and we are able to get st. Now, as long as you get st, of course, then you just go back to um, get the function u. Uh, so, the, the, by the way, for this kind of flow, we call the uh, shear flow, right? And and that's uh, one of the very few uh, computable examples of the of the of the uh, the, the t equation. Now, uh, as I mentioned. There's another thing. So numerically, we can do that as we go through this equation. So dg plus dg and the plus the dg, this one equals zero. And we have gx zero equals the, the, the base, uh, base x squared. Okay, so as I said, uh, the speed we compute is the limit, right? It's the limit as t goes to uh, infinity. So this is t and negative the gx. That's how we calculate. Now, when we calculate these kind of things, um, again, all right. So we already, we already know the existence. So one thing people want to understand is how this st, right? So this, how how this one, how st depends on depends on the flow intensity. So what do you mean flow intensity? So that is, if I speed up the location of the flow, well, mathematically, I can put a constant here, right? To measure how strong it is. And F, if, you see, if I put given A, now of course, this will become functional A, right? And then you want to understand how this one depends on the A. What a functional A is, for example, is a linear, or like less linear, for example, you have uh, a fraction of a over log a, or sometimes could even be constant. Not a constant, maybe it's bounded. That means if I draw, okay, so if I draw the graph, right? So this is a, and this is sta, right? And if I draw the graph, okay. So one case will be okay. So this is just like linear, fourth with a linear, and so this is a linear one. 
And otherwise, it's almost linear, but uh, it's uh, it, it, it expands a little bit. So this is A over log A. And then it could happen, for example, just, just uh, uh, fractions, right? So this, let's say, a square way, let's say, probably. And that case, uh, it's become bounded in horizontal. It's bounded. All right, so you have different situations. So this is, so what we do is, of course, we do theoretical is, we just go ahead to look at the different flows and we try to analyze how this, uh, how, how this uh, function looks like. Uh, but then I say, okay, well, what do you do, do uh, numerically? But the problem with numerical is you, you can expect that when the A gets very large, you have to discretize the X, smaller, smaller, right? So that means the uh, computing cost will be very large. And uh, because of that limitation, I and mean, that's the limitation of numerical one, and also numerical only speaks for by specific and not the uh, uh, specific data, and not really tell you uh, the type general graphs. Okay, but uh, the, uh, the one thing I want to say is um, uh, what? So, okay, so here's one thing numerically uh, we, we want to, uh, to try. Um, instead of uh, solving, so, okay, if you want to understand the dependent on A, right? A, a straightforward way is so it's okay, just numerically do it. You just, you just numerically do it and you solve it. But as I said, because when A gets large, the uh, cost will be very will be very big. So then how about that? Uh, it, instead of just implementing this uh, numeric scheme, are we able to design some neural network to learn it? So there wouldn't be to learn it. So here's the point. So this is something Jack and I would do for for linearized the uh, model, if not exactly for this one. But it's uh, it, it, it kind of a similar thin, uh, script. The point is this, right? You have for STA, right? right? And you have a function, you just solve it, right? So from here, A, you solve a function, right? So let's say this is a new AX. Now, um, we know as A gets large, it will compute again, that the computational cost will be, will be very big. So the point is, is it possible that we can basically find, okay? So this is A, now the next one we'll go to is 2A, right? And then U2AX. Now in general, of course, we know from here to here, it's very complicated. Yes, I mean, that's a relation, but it's very complicated, right? There's no way to read out, write out. But the question is, you learn it. Then that computer learned it. All right, so we did, uh, as I said, we did some linearized version uh, in, uh, in not exactly this one, but in a similar story. So that's in the linearized thing is you can write into Fourier transformation so you can get a lot of uh, our training data. Okay, so then the point is, if I'm able to learn this, say a, I, I go from A, say from 100 to 200, right? I learn this. Then I can, so I, I get a map. Then maybe I can apply the map from 200 to 400, right? And this will help me understand the better what happens uh, with the logic instead of really uh, numerically. Uh, right. So this is I, this is um, something I think I I, I know that uh, right now there's kind of uh, uh, I think quite a few people are working on like use uh, uh, neural network deep learning to to solve uh, PDs that have a static structure. In fact, the solutions have a static structure. So you can you can, you can capture that. Uh, so Jack and I, we we wrote that paper. So we don't need to try try to um, try to explore like whether uh, those things can be uh, can be can be done, or to if we have parameter in PD that will make the solution uh, very singular and uh, the thing is uh, with uh, with a large uh, computational cost. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. I think I'll stop. Thank you. So I've got a question about your VX, right? Like, obviously, there's a lot of complexity heading in that term if you have, like, you're trying to follow the fluid flow. So, how do you, I mean, how do you handle that? Obviously, in some cases, like, your shear flow, you said that you have a formula, but typically you wouldn't have a formula. Like, if you all the your surface equation, then why do you use your V equation? Or how are you, how do you handle that? Oh, very good question. So, first of all, we know if you look at the modeling of combustion, the most comprehensive one. Is not a story equation, coupled with the reaction division equation. 
because uh, you have to because the chemical reaction happens with the reaction diffusion equation and the flow is given by an office circuit. In reality, that means you cannot prescribe the flow velocity of EX, but it will change with the chemical reaction. But here, because of people with the purpose, the reaction diffusion equation not so I mean not even itself is completely not. If you couple those things together analytically, it's just hopeless. That's not nothing to do. But if you have supercomputer, right, you know all this lab, then you do it. But but then the, the point is people say, okay, even if there are, even you have to be doing I say, well, I want to simplify more. Well, with the purpose, with the limited purposes. The purpose is I just want to see books on one aspect, how the flow is going to impact yeah, in, impact your flame propagation. So that's we uh, with the place by B. But your question is how you place by B at the first place, right? All right, okay. So there's uh, I think uh, let me answer this one. Um, in 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 the combustion community, when they when they implement the uh, the G equation, they use uh, solutions from Marvis law equation as, uh, as as okay. So they solve Marvis law equation and then they they, they put it into here to, to do it. Now for us, uh, when we uh, when we when we say when we prove so, okay, so here's one thing. So in mathematics, when we prove something, we have to add some assumptions. Like here, when we prove the existence of, for this basic model, uh, for this basic model, when we prove the existence. We assume the flow is incompressible. We say, oh, that's okay, right? Now it's obviously incompressible. But we also have to assume something else. We assume the, the flow is periodic. But then it's okay, yeah, periodic doesn't seem very re realistic. No, so it's not good. Yeah, but, but here's the one thing I want to say. That, 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 that's just uh, the fact that we have to compromise. In mathematics, if you want to uh, rigorously to prove something, you know, when, when we say prove something, and when we are, uh, when um, uh, you, they say prove something, it's kind of different. Okay, so when we prove something is, unfortunately, very often we have to put uh, restrictive assumptions, but right? just, just to just to uh, demonstrate some basic fact. All right, so by the one, uh, the periodic flow people use, so that's Jack and I, we also use the so one we try to investigate how these things depends on the uh, A and other physical parameters. We try to use flows that mimic Navier's law equation. For example, uh, in 2D, we use the, uh, the uh, Delo flow, and in 3D, there's the ABC flow called uh, Arnold Bell Chapter Children's. So, those are periodic uh, static solutions to Navier's law equation. So, the people also use that when they do uh, try to do some numerical, reasonable numerical computation and analysis, try to understand that it's okay, we have some kind of problem. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, so there was a there was a thread I think that, that you had started to get earlier, and I sort of lost where it came from. You were talking about how you're using the level set method to solve this topology problem, where the topology is changing in the steps. And so, so you're modeling with the G equation how the wavefront propagates, so that you can set the wavefront to zero. Is that right? Like, how does that? I kind of lost how this is solving your topology problem. The point is, what do we care about? Right, so in in, uh, in 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 this model, all we care about is the mean frame flow. We just want to see the position of the frame flow. We don't care about the topology. Mm -hmm. Even the main flow could be very irregular, terrible. That's okay. We just want to know of course where they are. So that's okay. But if you talk to a geometer, yeah. they, that's a different story. Okay. They want to look at the singularity where it happens. Okay, yeah. But for us, it's uh, we don't care about. It. So you're solving that with by taking means. Uh, in, 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 in another part of PD theory, if you do regularity, they have a solution. Uh, they try to understand how regular the solution is, which means rather smooth, rather continuous. In geometry, just means how regular the level set are. Uh, I think that, that, that that's the uh, that's the only uh, inspired part of all here. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker, time. Uh, thank you for your presentation.